Hello friends, this video on diversity in living organisms part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us talk about symbiosis. What is symbiosis? It is an association between two or more species where one or both are mutually benefited. So it is an association between two or more species where one or both are mutually benefited. So what idea do you get about symbiosis looking at this picture here? So here if you see this insect is sitting on this flower. So the flowering plant as well as the insect both are getting benefited because the bees are getting nectar from the flower but at the same time the bees are helping the flower in pollination. So the flower's advantage is that it is getting pollinated and the bee's advantage is that it is getting nectar from the flowers. So the relationship between the flowering plant and the pollinators, for example the insects, the bees, this kind of a relationship is known as symbiosis where the association between two or more species where either both are getting benefited or one of them is getting benefited. So this kind of association is known as symbiosis. So it is not always necessary that both of them will get benefited. In some type of symbiotic relationship only one of them get benefited. So there are many different types of symbiotic relationships. So let us talk about the various symbiotic relationships. The first one is obligate relationship. What does the term obligate means? We often use it uh, that this is, we often use this term obligate. Obligate is derived from the word obligation. We often use it, right? It is an obligation for me to go to his classes. That means it is a kind of necessity for me to go to his classes. So the term obligate means something which is necessary. So it is necessity. So see, biology is all about terms. You should know the meaning of each and every term. So obligate is necessary. So these kind of relationship means the organisms completely dependent on each, completely depend on each other for survival. So living with each other is a necessity for the organism. So that particular organism cannot live without each other. So these kind of symbiotic relationship is known as obligate relationships. So if if we want an example for obligate relationship, we will talk about examples. First, let us understand the terminologies, right? Facultative relationships. It is just the opposite of obligate relationships. That means the organisms are not dependent on each other for survival, but still they are together. Maybe they are getting some benefits, but then it is not that without each other they will not survive. So that is facultative. Third one is ectosymbiosis. What is ectosymbiosis? The word ecto, what does it mean? Ecto means outside. So that means one organism leaves on the other. That is ectosymbiosis. The fourth one is endosymbiosis. Endo means inside. So endosymbiosis is one organism leaves inside the other. So that is endosymbiosis and one organism leaves on the other that is ectosymbiosis. So en, endo, this itself means inside and ecto means outside. So the organism leaves on the other. It doesn't leave inside that other organism. So these are the four different symbiotic relationships which we will talk about now. Right? So now let us look, let, let us try to understand each of them with the help of several examples. Right? Let us take these examples here. Look at this picture. What do you see here? You see you have a buffalo and the crow sitting over the buffalo. You would have often seen this scenario. Whenever you see a buffalo, you will always see crows sitting on the buffaloes. So what kind of relationship, what kind of symbiotic relationship is this? So when we talk about the buffalo and crow relationship, it is not that if the crow doesn't sit over the buffalo, the buffalo will die. It is not like that. Similarly, if the crow doesn't sit over the buffalo, it is not that the crow will die. Right? So they do not need to depend on each other for their survival. So it is not an obligate relationship. So what kind of relationship is it? It is a facultative relationship. Now, before that, why do you think it is a symbiotic relationship at all? Is it mutually benefiting both the buffalo and the crow or is is it benefiting only the buffalo or is it benefiting only the crow? 
Now, if you look at it, why why does the crow sit over a buffalo? That's because on the skin of the buffalo, there are many small ants and small insects. So, what does these crow do? The crow actually feeds on them. So, in a way, the crow is getting its food from the buffalo and the buffalo is getting benefited because it is getting rid of those uh, undesirable insects. So, the buffalo is also getting benefited. So, both of them are getting benefited and that is why it is a symbiotic relationship. I already told it is not an obligated relationship because they do not depend on each other for their survival. So, what kind of relationship is this? This is facultative symbiotic relationship. Facultative. Okay. Let us look at another example of the flowering plants and the pollinators. What kind of relationship is this? In this case, if you see the bee, bee gets its nectar from the flowers. Now, if the bee stops getting nectar from the flowers, what will happen to the bee? Will it get the nectar from somewhere else? Because flowering plants are the only source of nectar for the bees. So the bee entirely depends on the flowering plants for getting nectar. So if it doesn't get nectar, it will become difficult for the bee to survive. Correct? Now what about the flower? Because the bee comes to the flower, the flower gets pollinated. What is pollinated? Pollination is a process by which the flower actually reproduces. The plants actually reproduce. So if the bees stop coming to the flowers, pollination will not take place. So the reproduction will stop in the plants. So that means the flower as well as the bee, both of them depend on each other for their existence. Correct? So this is an obligate relationship. True? Okay. Let us look at some other common examples. The relationship between a human being and his domesticated animal, this domesticated dog. What kind of relationship is this? Do you think that they cannot live without each other if this person does not have this pet, he will not be able to survive? It is not like that. Similarly, the dog can also survive even without this person. But at the same time, when they are together, the man feeds the dog, takes care of the dog, so the dog is benefited. At the same time, the dog also protects the man from strangers, it protects his house from thieves. So the dog also helps the man. So this kind of relationship is again a facultative relationship because they do not depend on each other for their survival. Another example, the lice present on our hair. What kind of relationship? The lice feeds on the blood of our skin and that is how it receives its new food and nutrients. So that is how the lice gets benefited. But what about, what about the person? Is the person also getting benefited? If you look at it, the person is not actually getting benefited. So in this case, this kind of a relationship, only one of them is getting benefited. So even this also falls under the category of symbiotic relationship. Because I told, it is not necessary that in all symbiotic relationship, both the organisms will get benefited. Sometimes only one of them can also get the benefit. So this is one such example where only one organism is getting benefited. Right? Now let us also talk about the ectosymbiosis and endosymbiosis. Now again, let us take this example. So here, if you see, one organism leaves on the other organism. The crows are on the buffalo. So this is ectosymbiosis, right? Similarly, for this lice on the hair, that is also ectosymbiosis. Let us take some another example where we get stomach infection. What happens? There are some worm, worms which are sitting inside our stomach or maybe inside the intestine or somewhere inside our body. So that is an example of endosymbiosis. In this case, what happens? The microbes in, enter inside the human body and they stay inside our body. They get their food, they get their nutrients from our body. Now again, it depends. They can either cause harm to our body. They cannot cause harm as well. So that again depends. But anyways, we are not getting any benefit because of those um, microbes staying inside our body. But this is also a symbiotic relationship because at least one of the two organisms is getting benefited.
right and this kind of symbiosis is endosymbiosis so now you understand the different types of symbiotic relationships some relationships both will get benefited in some only one will get benefited in some they will be completely dependent on each other for survival while in others they are not completely dependent but then if they both are there that is good in some the organisms will one organism will live inside the body of another organism while in others one organism will live on the body of the other organism so on similar grounds let us talk about the symbiotic relationship of a fungi so what with whom does a fungi share a symbiotic relationship so this is the example so here you can see that there are fungi which are in a symbiotic relationship with algae so here you can see there are green colored structures they are nothing but algae and on that you have some yellow colored structures they are nothing but fungi so the fungi stays in a symbiotic relationship with algae and this is known as a lichen so this lichen is a symbiotic relationship of fungi with algae so now we are going to discuss in detail about lichen. So let us see what are lichens. It is a symbiotic relationship between fungi and blue-green algae. So that is known as lichen. So let us see what kind of symbiotic relationship is this. So here you can see these lichens as green colored patches at the bark of tree. So these green colored patches are nothing but a relationship between fungi and blue-green algae. So let us see how they both get benefited from each other. When we look at the blue-green algae, we have seen that what are blue-green algae? They are the cyanobacteria of Monera kingdom, right? So they are capable of performing photosynthesis so they can prepare food. So this food they can provide to the fungi as well. So the fungi receives its food from the algae so that is how the fungi gets benefited what about the algae how the algae gets benefited the fungi actually protects the algae so it protects the algae from drying out it also shades the algae from sunlight by enclosing it within their body so it is something like this is the fungi is the ex is present externally and algae is present internally so fungi will protect it from sunlight, from extreme rains, from extreme heat and the algae will keep preparing food and provide it to the fungi. Now one fungus can form lichen with a variety of algal species, right? Because it is not necessary that only one particular fungi can form lichen with one particular al algae. So one particular fungal fungus can form lichen with a variety of algal species. Now this lichen is not similar to neither similar to algae not similar to fungi. So it is different from both algae and fungi. So this is a symbiotic relationship. So when we talk about the nutrition for fungi that is why we talk about autotrophic nutrition. We talk about heterotrophic nutrition under which we talk about sapro saprophytes. We talk about parasitic and we also talk about this symbiotic relationship because this lichens are a very important relationship between fungi and blue-green algae. Now let us look at the importance of fungi. I mean why are we studying so many things about fungi? How are they important to us? However, I am sure by this time because fungi are something which you would have seen in your day-to-day -day life. So you must be understanding what are the importance of fungi. They help in decomposition of organic wastes as the fungi feed on the dead and decomposed plant and animals. So they help us to decompose those organic wastes. Otherwise, what will happen? Those wastes will keep on dumping on the earth and it will cause pollution to the earth. So they actually help us by feeding on dead and decomposed. They are valuable in plastic industry as I mentioned before also that they help in the production of plastics. They are valuable in op obtaining drugs like penicillin. I gave the example of molds, right? From molds, we get, obtain many different types of drugs. They also play a role in baking industries. For example, yeast. Yeast is used for uh, preparation of bread or preparation of cake and things like that. So in baking industries also, they play a very important role. So these are some of the significance of fungi because of which we, we actually divided them as a separate kingdom as well.
Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.